Hello everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a trading bot using the Alpaca API and the Python programming language. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering retrieving market data, both stocks and crypto, via the Alpaca API as well as retrieving account information, and then we're going to trade some stocks. There's a few prerequisites you're going to need before we go through this tutorial. Um, the first thing you're going to need is an Alpaca account. You can get one of those by going to their website and signing up. We're going to be doing everything through a paper account, so you don't need to enter any sensitive customer data or you don't need to put any money in. Everything is going to be with fake money for uh, test purposes only. The second prerequisite is that you're going to at least need to know how to run a Python file. Um, so I will not be teaching you Python in this tutorial. I will link a whole bunch of accredited tutorials in the comment section, and if you don't know how to run Python, I suggest you go watch them and get set up. Um, I will be using VS Code for writing all my code and executing the Python files, so if you're also not familiar with Python, I do recommend you install VS Code as well. Um, if you are familiar, then you can use whatever uh, integrated development environment you want. Um, let's get right into it. So a quick overview of the Alpaca dashboard. Um, I'm currently logged into my paper account. In the top left corner, you can switch between your paper and live. You may not have a live account set up yet because uh, you haven't completed Know Your Customer. Um, I'm going to be working in paper account because I don't want to spend real money on anything. Um, over here we have our portfolio value. You may not have a value here yet. You would have to reset your account. You can pick whatever value you want. This is a paper account so you can pretend to have a whole bunch of money, like a million dollars. And uh, click confirm. And that should show up here after a refresh. So we have a million dollars in our test account. Um, buying power of 2000 because it's assuming that we have margin. Go back to home there. And uh, so yeah, that's the, the, the reset account functionality. Um, now we're gonna wanna get our API keys so we can make automated requests using Python. So I'm gonna click on view API keys. We don't have any new, we don't have any API keys because we just, uh, we just reset our account. So I'm gonna generate new keys. And then right here I have my key and my secret and these two values are gonna let us log into our uh, paper alpaca account via the Python code that we're gonna be writing. Okay, so I have VS Code open. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be using VS Code. You can use whatever um, application you want to to write code. I just ask that you probably know Python if you're gonna do that. Otherwise, if you wanna follow along. Um, first things first, I'm gonna open a new terminal and I'm going to run my Python version. So if you don't know how to run Python or if you're completely unfamiliar with Python, then there will be some tutorials in the, in the bottom in the description that, that will teach you how to do that. I'm not gonna teach you how to do that here. So um, I'm gonna run Python 3.12-V and as you see, it ran my uh, Python version. So I'm gonna exit out of that. And the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to install the um, Alpaca Trade API for the uh, for for pip. So I'm going to pip install the Alpaca Trade API. I'm going to do Python 3.12 dash m pip install Alpaca dash py, and that's going to run a whole bunch of stuff. That's going to install the Alpaca Trade API. And so that took around 15 seconds, um, all done now. And next up, I'm going to zoom in on my code because I know you're gonna to wanna to see this a little bit um, up close and personal this time. So as you see here, I have a empty code project here. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new file and I'm gonna run, or I'm gonna type in here alpacadust.py and that's gonna be our main entry point. Um, then I'm going to type in a whole bunch of things here. So these are going to be our alpaca imports. So from alpaca.trading.client, we're going to import our trading client. And um, this will allow us to connect to our account that we see over here. So I'm pretty much going to connect to this automatically with, uh, by, by using code. Um, so I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call that trading client. I'm gonna equal that to our trading client object that we just imported. And I'm gonna put our API key in here. So the first variable is our API key. You can get that from right here. And then I put that in there. And then the second variable is our API secret. And we're gonna encase both of them in quotes because they are a string. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print trading client dot get account. And then what we can do is type in our get account account number. And we can also print out our maybe our buying power and see how much money we have. So let's run this. We're gonna type in Python 3.12 alpaca test.py. I'm gonna run that in the terminal. See my account number is this long string of characters and then my buying power is two million and that matches the buying power seen right here. Um, that's not cash in hand, that's the buying power with margin. It just automatically assumes that you're gonna be using margin. So yeah, that's uh, if, you've, if you've completed this step, you've successfully connected to your Alpaca account. Um, if you get an error when you run this or it returns null, um, what may be the issue is you might have the wrong API key input. You may have, um, you may have not created uh, this properly over here. So I would recommend resetting the account and trying to view your API keys again. But um, yeah, congratulations, you've connected to your Alpaca account. Okay, so now that we made a trading client, what we're going to do is make some historical data requests to the stock trading API. Um, you could do this with crypto as well. There are a few differences between the two APIs, but for the most part, they're exactly the same when you request data in the past. Um, so let's do that now. Uh, first things first, I'm going to comment this out. And uh, we're going to import, we're going to be we're going to be requesting trades throughout the trading day today. So what I'm going to do is from alpaca.data import stock historical data client and we're going to want stock trades request because we're going to be making a trades request. And I'm also going to do from date time import date time because we're going to need to specify a start and end time and it uses the Python library date time to handle that. So first things first, we're going to um, make a data client variable and we're going to equal that to stock historical data client. And I'm going to use my API and see root key. This is exactly the same as our trading client up here. Uh, but instead, it's a, it's a different object. There's going to be different methods on it and we can do different things with it. So um, that should be good. We'll uh, use that to log in um, with this object. And then I'm going to make our request params in a uh, stock trades request. So fill out this object. We do a symbol or symbols. Uh, we can do Apple. There's always a lot of trades on Apple. And then we can do um, our start time, which should be. So what I'm going to do is I want to start. Uh, I want to get all the trades from 9.30 a.m. this morning until... 9:45 a.m. Uh, 15 minutes later, and so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in UTC time in the daytime because it's daytime agnostic until you you specify a daytime or a, a time zone. Yes, until you specify a time zone, it's time zone agnostic, and so I'm going to put in UTC time of 9:30 a.m. this morning, which is daytime of 2024. Month is is one. January and then 30th, uh, that's the day. And then for our um, 9.30 a.m. is 2 p.m. UTC time. And so here I'm gonna put in 14 because it uses the, uh, you know, the military uh, time. And then I'm gonna put in 30 minutes, okay? So to end it, we're gonna do 15 minutes later, date time 2024, 1.30. Um, 14 and then 45. Okay, so there's our stock trades request object. And then all that's left to do is to call the API. We're going to do a variable called trades and we're going to equal that to um, data client dot get stock trades. And then we're going to put our request params in there. And then I'm going to print out trades and I'm expecting a whole bunch of trades because right at the beginning of the day, there's going to be a lot of trades, probably thousands, um, tens of thousands within the first 15 minutes. So especially on Apple. So I'm going to run that and it's going to stream through in the, in the terminal once it receives all of them. Uh, there they go. It's, it's too hard to read them because they're going so fast, but we're at 37, 38, 39, 40. And then it finally ends at, uh, 
you know, 1 or January 30th, 14, 44, 59. So in pretty much the last second, there was a trade. In the last second, there was a whole bunch of trades. Um, so yeah, and what we can do is we can loop over the uh, trades and trades dot data. And I think we need to do this. And we can print trade. So if we, we loop over this, we print the trade, and then I'm going to break because what I only what I want to do is I just want to print the the first um, the first trade. So let's run that. It's going to retrieve them, and then it should print the first one. And right here we have the first trade of the day. It seems as though it was on the Q exchange price of 190.95. There was 58 shares sold. And um, you have a whole bunch of other information here that probably isn't really useful to a beginner. So let's just verify that stock price today. What, uh, what price did Apple start at? There we go. And we have at the beginning of the day, 190.85. And in here we have 190.95, which is, which is pretty close comparatively, um, considering that Alpaca uh, might have a better granular data than than this chart here. Um, so see how it skyrockets up. So, you know, it starts at 190.85 and it might move up immediately after that. Um, so yeah, there you go. You've requested your first data using Alpaca and Python. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be creating our first order. So I have all this code in here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all that stuff that we just made in regards to um, collecting trading data. And I'm gonna uncomment this stuff out up here because we're gonna be using this trading client again. And uh, the first thing I wanna do is get rid of these two print statements because we don't need them anymore. And I'm gonna import a few more things from up here. So I'm gonna do from alpaca.trading requests. We're gonna import a market order request because we're gonna be creating a market order first. And then we're going to be um, importing uh, two enums from the Alpaca trading enums uh, library. Import order side and time in force. Order side will be whether you're buying or shorting um, a stock. And then time in force will be whether um, it's like a day, if it's uh, good only immediately, um, is essentially like a type of market order. Um, we're gonna be using day uh, for right now and I'll explain to you what that is later. Um, first off, we have to build our request. So I'm going to do market order data is equal to market order request. And then in this, we need to put in a symbol. Um, my favorite sock is SPY because it is a good ETF to buy if you don't know what you're doing. And we're gonna buy, um, we're gonna buy one share of SPY right now. So Alpaca supports fractional shares and you can do that by like saying like, we could buy half a share or we could buy a full share or we could buy two, you know, 100 if we have enough money for it. But uh, right now I'm just gonna be buying one, one, uh, one share of SPY, and then we're going to be buying. So we need to put order side of buy in here. So see, there's two options, sell or buy. A buy is, you know, just buying the stock, and then a sell would be if you're shorting it. And then time and force, oops, we're gonna do time in force is equal to time and force dot day. So, there's a few others in here. So good until canceled means that it will literally go forever. So if, uh, you know, um, if you have this order open for a week or two, it'll still be good until, uh, until you, you cancel it. Uh, kind of dangerous. Um, you know, some of these other ones, fill or kill, that is like, you know, either it happens immediately or it doesn't happen at all. Uh, day just means it'll be open until the end of the day or until you cancel it. So we're gonna use day. And notice how this is a market order request. So we are not putting in a, a limit, like a limit buy that we want to, um, like a limit price that we would want to buy it at. We can't specify the price. We're gonna, we're gonna basically get SPY at whatever price, um, at whatever pr price, price SPY is at right now. So if we look up SPY, 
So we should be expecting to buy it around like $488 um, at current present moment. So we are in the, you know, we are in trading hours today. Um, and then I'm going to make an order. If I do market order is equal to trading client. Dot, let me see here. Submit order. I'm looking for submit order. So if we type that out, submit order, and then we're going to pass in our order data request. And then we can print out our market order and it should show that it was uh, placed. So I have my Alpaca account open right here. Um, as you can see, it's still completely fresh. I haven't done anything on it yet. Um, and down here we have our recent orders, which is empty. So I'm going to open up the orders page here where I can view and manage my orders. And as soon as I execute this code, there should be an order popping up in there. So let's test that out by running this. See there, we printed out our order object. And if I go back to Alpaca, we have one order for SPY and it's filled. So if I go back to my paper account, um, we have bought some SPY and it seems as though I've made four cents since then on my one share of SPY. So very good, congratulations. We are a profitable trader. Okay, so now that we've made a market order, we're gonna go to a little bit more advanced type of order called a limit order. And what a limit order will allow you to do is specify a certain price that um, you would want to buy a stock at. So if we're at SPY here, and you know, I think $488 is too much for SPY, and I only want to buy it at $486.57, um, we, we can specify that. And then so, you know, the brokerage will only buy the stock if you, if you, uh, if, if it reaches that level. Um, you can do that two ways, um, either on a buy or a sell side. So if you're trying to buy the stock, you want like a lower price limit that you're going to set. But if you're doing a, if you're shorting a stock, you're going to specify the price you're willing to to short it at, which would be above the current price or you know around there. It could be even below it, but then it's going to fill immediately if you set it below. So let's do a limit buy order. So I'm going to change this a market order request to limit order request. We're going to keep these enums right here. And I'm going to change this to a limit order request and then limit order data. So we're going to keep symbol of spy. We're going to keep quantity of one side of order side by and then time of force a day. But we're going to add in a parameter here um, called a limit price. If I can type and, you know, so Spy is at say, um, you know, four four eighty eight eleven. I guess I can probably check it in here too. So spy is at um, hovering around like four eighty seven, four eighty eight right now. So you know, I'm actually, I'm actually only willing to buy at four eighty six. So if we do that, four eighty six, and then we type in trading client dot submit order, and we put in our limit order data and we print out our, um, oops, sorry, I gotta save that in a variable if I wanna print it out. Limit order is equal to trading client dot submit order. And then if I print out my limit order, if you see in my account here, I have a recent order and this is filled. So this is that spy market buy that I just completed. But now I'm gonna print out the limit order that I create. And theoretically, since spy is above 486 right now it shouldn't get filled it should just sit there until the end of the day so until markets close at the end of the day so let's run that and we have our order uh limit price 486 and if we go back to our account we can see our spy limit buy of 486 right here um and so click on that we see that it hasn't been filled yet. It's status new. We haven't bought it. Average cost of this, um, you know, and in the app here, I can uh, I can cancel that via this like X button. Are you sure you want to cancel your spy order? Confirm, and that just canceled that order. So that ain't, that order is not going to go through. Um, what I'm actually going to do though is I'm going to put that order back into the into the queue. So I'm, I'm basically running that again. So it goes back there because we are going to learn how to cancel our orders next or to get our orders from uh, the Alpaca trading account. 
Okay, so the next thing on the list, um, we're gonna be managing our orders in Alpaca via the API. So this is very important if you're building a automated trading account because like say you create an order and then you know a minute or two later, that limit order is invalid compared to your algorithm. <clears throat> um, so it's very important to be able to manage your orders in queue or else they live there forever and you'd have to like go in here and manually check them. So what we're gonna do is we have this uh, new open spy limit order right here. And so it's still above 486. Our buy order is at 486. Spy is still around 487.40. So, you know, we have a long way to go before it actually hits our limit. But I've decided I don't want this in order anymore. So I wanna get rid of it. And I could click this X, but what we're gonna be doing is doing that through the API. So first things first, gonna delete all that. We're gonna keep the trading client because that is the object that we're gonna be doing this through. And I'm gonna import a few things here. Um, so if we do this, I'll track a alpaca trading request and we're gonna import a get order request, get orders request. And then from alpaca dot trading dot enums, we're gonna import order side because we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to uh, filter based off of that and query order status. So um, let's build out our request and we're gonna make a get orders request. And what we have to put in here is a status and query order status dot open. So what this specifies is an open order. So this limit by here is open right now because it hasn't been canceled and it hasn't been filled. So these two should not show up when we go over our orders. Um, I can actually, we can actually go look at this like more in depth, I believe. Yes, right here. Back to orders. Um, and if I filter this by, oh no, open. Yes, open right here. We only have one order. So this is the only order that we should get when we, uh, when we do this. So we can even further filter by putting in a side and then, you know, order side uh, by or which will return our one order that's a buy in there or an order side does sell. Um, but we don't need to do this. This is uh, an unnecessary option to put in. Um, even the status I believe is unnecessary, but we want to filter specifically by open. So we do orders and then trading client dot get orders. And then we pass in our request params. We can print orders, we can print our orders. So let's run that. Okay, so down here, we printed out our orders and this is basically an array of orders. So we can loop over this for order in orders, we print our order and we can print the order ID. So the ID is the unique identifier for the order that we're gonna be um, needing to cancel it. So see there we have a unique uh, UUID v4, it seems as though. And what we can now do with that order ID is um, we can cancel it. So say we wanted to cancel all of our orders that came out of this thing, we would need to get the ID um, we'd need to uh, then call another function called trading client dot cancel order by ID. So very convenient. We can pass in our order ID in here, order dot ID. And notice how we have one open order right here in the uh, open tab of our orders. And if I run this, ideally it should disappear because it uh, ran without error and no open orders. So closed, we have a buy limit canceled that just, that just happened. This is the one that just happened. In a similar vein to um, managing and getting orders, we can also get our current positions. So currently my account owns one share of SPY. So I have um, down here in my top positions, I have one share of SPY. I can click on my positions to uh, go into further detail and look into this. Um, but say I wanted to see this automatically and we can do that by, um, 
quite simple actually. So we can pretty much get rid of everything that we've made there. And we just need our trading client. And then we can get our positions is equal to trading client dot get all positions. And then if we print out our positions, we'll have a whole bunch of data um, in regards to each of our positions. So this is an array. And once again, we can loop over it since this is an array. Sorry. For position in positions, we can print our position. Um, and then this is an object, so we can do present um, let's see here, symbol, symbol, and then we can print the current price. So this should print out SPY and then something around, you know, whatever the current price of SPY is uh, at 486, uh, 487.40. So it should ideally print out a number around there. 486.90. Okay. So cool. That's how we would print out our positions. Obviously, if we had more positions, um, more would show up here. I can even show you that. Let me, um, let's do like Tesla. We can buy some Tesla stock real quick in the dashboard. Um, one, one, yep. Review order, confirm order, order created. And then I go back and in my top, top positions, I have one spy, one Tesla. And if I run this again, I should have two orders or two positions then. So I have SPY at 487.035, and then I have Tesla at 187.40. So that's how you would get all the positions in your account. And then what you can do um, is, you know, loop over your uh, positions. Like say I wanted to close all of these out, we can use the prior step of creating orders to go through all of your positions and create sell orders to um, close out the positions. There's also a few helper functions where you can, um, you know, be like, instead of, you know, having to go through and close out like individual ones, if you just wanted to completely liquidate your account, you can come here and you can go trading client, dot close all positions, and you don't need to pass in a, uh, um, pass in like an order request, but it seems as though you need to pass in a, uh, Boolean for cancel orders, which would mean if you have a whole bunch of orders, it would also cancel them. So we can do that. Sorry, uh, true is capitalized in Python. And notice here I have SPY and Tesla right now, but if I run this, it should close them all up. And they're all gone. Okay, so one final thing I want to show you before I let you to your own devices is how to stream stocks. So um, at the beginning, we went through and we requested historical data about a stock over a period of time. Um, however, you know, that's slow and we want to have the most up-to-date data at all times, depending on your algorithm. I mean, you might not, but um, for a lot of projects, you're going to want the most up-to-date trades, the most up-to-date quotes and everything. And so I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to stream data in real time. So pretty much every time a trade happens on the stock market, you can get it sent directly to your computer. You don't need to request it. It just comes straight to your computer. So let's set that up. Um, first of all, we're going to comment all this out again. So I just commented out that uh, thing because we're going to be using a new client. Um, we're going to do from alpaca.data.live import stock data stream. Um, there's also a crypto data stream, so if you're interested in crypto, you can um, use that one instead. It's pretty much plug and play the exact same thing. So stock data stream, and then we're going to make our stream object, and we're going to make the stream is equal to stock data stream. And we're going to take our API key and our API secret and plug them in here because um, we're making a new thing. And then we're going to make a function that will be called asynchronously, so we're going to call async def. Um, Every single time a trade comes in, we're going to do something with the trade. So async def handle trade, and we have to take the data. It takes in one parameter. We're going to have the data, and we're just going to print that data. Um, so this data is going to be a trade object, and we're just going to print it out. So every time we get a trade, we print it out. And we're going to go to stream, and we're going to basically pass in this handle trade object to the stream so that we can... Um, uh, basically, it'll call this function every time a trade comes in. So 
we do stream.subscribeTrades, and then we pass in our handle trade object, and then we're gonna pass in a symbol. So I'm gonna pass in Apple here. This is only gonna work for Apple trades then. Um, you can pass in multiple. So say I wanted to do Microsoft and Apple. Um, let's just do that. We can, we can just do that. Um, so this is how you subscribe to numerous trade streams. So pretty much every trade on the, on the exchange that is of Microsoft or Apple is gonna come straight to your computer when you run this. So we do stream dot run. And what I'm expecting to happen here is basically get live trade updates every single time this, uh, that a trade comes in. So let's run that. Um, oh, can we not subscribe to multiple? So let's just try this. Let's just subscribe to one for right now. APO. We're just gonna, gonna subscribe to Apple. Three. waiting for that not only to get set up, but also to um, get trades in. Okay, so here we have trades coming in um, pretty much instantaneously. So these are all um, within a second of each other. These three were in the exact same second. Um, yeah, so if I wanted to, you know, print out certain data from that, we could, we could go in here and see like exactly the time that it happened at. But yes, this is how you get access to real-time stock market trade data. Um, you can do the same with quotes. So quotes, if we just make that, it doesn't matter the name, obviously. But. And quotes will come in, I think, every second because there's like a minute quote each time on the exchange. So it's gonna give a, the, uh, um, basically what you could buy the stock for every individual second. So, yeah. So that's pretty much the basics of the Alpaca API. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I'll uh, try to help you out as best as I can. Um, also leave any requests for future tutorials down there and I'll uh, happily attempt to build something and teach you how to do it. Thanks.